Model engineering for beginners. This is part 33. Basic metal bashing, making a small shovel. The shovel that I have for my large traction engine is a bit on the short side. You can see a part of it in this image. It's above the piece of brass. I'm going to make a new one with a longer handle, just using some pieces of scrap metal. And this piece of scrap metal is from my offcuts box, and it's a piece of brass of just the right thickness to turn into a shovel. The first thing to do is to mark it out. I need to make sure that the shovel that I make is exactly the same size as the one I have already, because it is quite important that the shovel fits into the firehole door. I think the sensible thing to do is to mark the centre. So here's the centre and I've drawn a line down the middle of it. Then using the very scientific method of holding the original shovel on the line, I can draw around the original shovel, but I'm going to enlarge it very slightly. So here's the marking out result. Fairly horrible as usual, but at least I understand what's happening. The inner lines are the size of the original shovel. If I bend a piece of brass sheet in the vise using the innermost lines, I will leave the bottom part of the shovel as curved as possible. If this doesn't make sense, just watch the next part. I'm going to make this shovel in a really crude manner, and I'm doing this on purpose. It's like metal bashing for beginners. I'm using a hammer called a Thor, as in Thor, the god of war. Luckily, this piece of brass sheet is quite soft and it bends very well in the vice jaws. For most of the bending, I'm using the hide side of this hammer. But when I want to tighten the curve, I'm going to use the copper side. You will see this in a moment as I turn the hammer round. Using the copper side of the hammer is much more brutal as far as the copper sheet is concerned. As you can clearly see, the bend is much tighter now. Although don't forget, I'm doing it this way to make sure it's curved. That's one side done, so I've turned the part over in the vise and I'm now bending the other side. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, I cut two slots in the brass. Here you can see the slot and there's one at each side, although for some reason it wasn't quite so visible on the first part of this. The normal way to make a box or a shovel is to just take out the corners, just cut two squares off the piece of metal, but I want to save all the metal from a strength point of view. The next part of the job is to bend the two side pieces inward, and once I'd done that at both sides, I bent the remaining flap upwards to meet them. Once I'd bent the two tabs inwards, followed by the main flap of metal, I tidied it up using the bandsaw. Also, I rounded and chamfered the front part. It's a bit rough at the moment. It will look a lot better, well, marginally better, once I've silver soldered it, after which I will clean it up properly and shape the shovel. Silver soldering this shovel took a lot of heat. If you want to know more about silver soldering, please watch all the other videos that I've made about silver soldering. I recommend watching a video called Silver Soldering for Beginners. For silver soldering, these days I use EasyFlow number no. 2 Flux and SilverFlow 55 silver solder rods. I need to drill a hole in the center of the shovel at the rear. This is where I'm going to mount the handle. Initially I marked the position a little bit on the high side, but when I drilled the hole, I decided to go in the middle both ways. And once I drilled it tapping size for 3 8 by 26 threads per inch, I threaded it using a 3 8 by 26 threads per inch tap. Brass threads very easily, especially when it's just been heated up in a silver soldering process. This is an important clip. You can also see that I added some more scrap pieces of brass to thicken the rear of the shovel. And yes, it's not pretty, and I've done much better work, but I wanted to show that you can make things just from scrap. I found a piece of brass that was nearly the right width to put in the centre, as you can see here. I may even tidy up the shovel with a bit of JB Weld, just to see how the JB Weld stands the heat, although the shovel isn't really going to get that hot. But I'll try it anyway once I've made the handle, which is a long piece of 3 eighths of an inch diameter stainless steel, which I will thread 3 eighths by 26 threads per inch to match the thread on the shovel end. To finish this short video about making a shovel from scrap pieces of metal, in this clip I'm loading the part into my acid bath where I will leave it for 24 hours. Here's a handy tip that you may find useful. I use the bones from the acid bath, once they're nice and clean, to hang cloths on to dry, because when you work with steam engines you end up with a lot of wet cloths. And that's it for this episode, short and sweet. 
you'll be able to see the finished shovel when I use it for shoveling coal into the firehole door of my large model showman's engine. But until then, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.